This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Let's get the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy of the praise. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, hallelujah. He's worthy of the praise. Amen, amen. Welcome, everyone, to God in the Midst. Get them radio. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. It is so wonderful to be with you this morning um, for this awesome Sunday School lesson. Let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We thank you, God, for who you are and all that you do. You're wonderful, God, marvelous, magnificent, and worthy of all of the praise. We thank you that you gave us your darling son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins and that you raised from the dead. Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ. Jesus, thank you for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. Oh, Lord, and then when you took him home to glory to sit at your right hand, interceding on our behalf, Lord, you did not leave us hopeless or helpless. You sent down your Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and abide in each one of us who believe and have faith and trust in your holy name. So thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, we just plead the blood over everyone who's on this line now, who's listening over Facebook, and those who are going to be listening to this recording later, Lord. We praise you, Lord, and we plead your blood over their lives, over their families, over their homes, over their communities, their neighborhoods, Lord. We plead the blood over their villages and towns or wherever they are. We plead your blood, God, over their, their states and countries, cities, and all of that, Lord. We just plead the blood. And we just ask you now, Lord, that you touch this technology that we own, that everything works well to your glory and to your honor. We give you praise, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our lesson today, our lesson today comes from Daniel, the book of Daniel. Um, and we're going to be looking at the ninth chapter of Daniel, the ninth chapter of Daniel. Um, we're going to be starting at, uh, at verse, well, the text says verses four through eight. And then it says verses 15 through 19, but uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, read, I think, all the way to 19, and I'm not going to read it. I'm going to have uh, the, uh, what is it called, the Bible gateway to In speak. In the first year of Darius, son of Xerxes, a Mede by descent, yes. who was made ruler over the Babylonian kingdom in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, Lord, the great and awesome God, yes. who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments, we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our ancestors, and to all the people of the land. Lord, 
you are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame. Mm -hmm. The people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, both near and far, in all the countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you. Yes, yes. We and our Mercy kings, God. our princes, and our ancestors are covered with shame, Lord, Mercy. because we have sinned against you. Mercy, God. The Lord, Mercy. our God, is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. Oh, we have not obeyed the Lord our God or kept the laws he gave us through his servants, the prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and mm. turned away, mm. refusing yeah. to obey you. Therefore, the curses and sworn judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against you. Oh, mercy, God. You have mercy, fulfilled God. the mercy. words spoken against us and against our rulers by bringing on us great disaster. Mm. Under the whole heaven, nothing has ever been done like what has been done to Jerusalem. Oh, Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come on us. Yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord our God by turning from our sins and giving attention to your truth. The Lord did not hesitate to bring the disaster on us, for the Lord our God is righteous, righteous. in everything he does. Everything. Yet we have not obeyed him. Merciful, merciful. Now, Lord our God, who brought your people out of Egypt with a mighty hand and who made for yourself a name that endures to this day, we have sinned. We have done wrong. Mm. Lord, in keeping with all your righteous acts, Turn, turn away, away your, your anger, anger and your, your wrath, wrath from Jerusalem, oh, your away, city, your holy hill. Yes. Our sins and the iniquities of our ancestors have made Jerusalem and your people an object of scorn mm. to all those around us. Now, now our God, now, hear, hear the, the prayers praise and petitions praises. of your servants. Yes. For your sake, Lord, yes. look with favor on your desolate sanctuary. Yes. Give ear, our God, and hear. Yeah. Open, Open your eyes Open and see, see the desolation of the city that bears your name. Yes. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous, but because oh, of your, your great, great mercy. mercy. Lord, listen. Lord, forgive. Yes. Lord, hear yes. and act. Yes. For your yes. sake, my God, do not delay because your city and your people bear your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was the Bible Gateway NIV dramatization of chapter 9, verses 1 through 19. And, and ooh, ooh. Oh, hallelujah. This, this lesson, this lesson, the, the Sunday school is approaching it from, commentary is approaching it from the standpoint of a prayer for obedience, faith, a prayer for obedient faith. But, but when I hear this, I hear this, I hear a cry. I hear a cry in this text for cleansing and renewal. I, I, I see in this text a uh, 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 confession. Uh, I see in this text a uh, uh, petition or supplication. And, and all of this is inside of this prayer that, 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 that Daniel is praying. He's, he's praying to God for, for, for uh, confessing his sins and the sins of the world and the sins of his people. That's what confession is. It's, it's admitting and agreeing with God that sin is sin. And then he gives his petition, his, his supplication, if you will. And his supplication is, 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 making, is making a request or an appeal to God. Oh, yes. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel understood as we do in the New Testament that that first uh, John one nine verse that says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us. Oh, hallelujah. Cleanse us. 
of all unrighteousness. He forgives us and he cleanses us. So Daniel is crying out, oh, have mercy. So our key verse for this lesson, our key verse is that verse 19. And, 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 and it says, it says, Lord, Lord, oh, Lord, listen, Lord, Lord, forgive. Lord, hear and act for, for your sake, my God. Do not delay because your city and your name and your people, excuse me, your city and your people bear your name. The times we're living in right now is a time where, where like David, I mean, excuse me, like Daniel and, and the rest of the Hebrews who are in captivity, they're living in trying times. They're living in trying times. And when you're living in trying times, that, that means you're going to be around a situation where there's evil going around, sin uh, multiplying and multiplying and, and someone has to be in the mindset where they cry out to God and ask for forgiveness not only for their sins but the sins of the people oh hallelujah mm -mm -mm. our key concept for this lesson our key concept is we always struggle with sin but God loves us enough and is merciful to forgive us when we ask for forgiveness. Our keys for kids this day, number one, it is always important to tell the truth about our behavior before God in prayer. Don't, don't be trying to whitewash it and cover it up. God already knows. So, so we got to tell the truth. And number two. God will always love us and be ready to have us back in his arms and living the right way. Oh, hallelujah. So our lesson aims for today, our lessons aims for today is first of all, we're going to do some learning facts. We're going, we're going to know that there's, it, that is never too late to repent and be redeemed by the Lord. It's never too late to confess with your mouth and repent. And God will forgive us and redeem us. Set us free. Hallelujah. Our biblical principle is to recognize our sins and repent and confess to God. And then allow God to use us. And the daily application that we want to walk away from this lesson is to, to walk in obedience to the Lord each day of our lives. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. Our background for this lesson is Daniel's name uh, means, means God is my judge. And I, I love that. God is my judge. I, I don't. I don't want to judge myself. I. I don't. I don't want to judge others. I don't want others judging me. I want God to judge me. I'd rather be in God's hands than in anyone else's hands. Because when we're in God's hands, we we we're in merciful hands. Oh, hallelujah! And so, his his name his name means God is my judge which is consistent with, with, with the actions and visions that unfold throughout the book of Daniel. The book's purpose is to strengthen and encourage those who are in captivity, all of the Jews, and, 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 and are under pressure to compromise or abandon their religion. Oh, yeah. Sounds like today, huh? People want us to compromise and abandon our beliefs in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So this book includes the account of, of the times that, that Daniel was in the king's court and, and had visions and, and all of that. And chapters 
one uh one through six presents uh this 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 uh, uh god that that intervenes presents god as the intervener into man's daily lives so we got a variety of circumstances that that went on through one and, and six that's that's what uh daniel interpreted the king's dreams and and then he rescued the three Hebrew, Hebrew boys Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and then and then from the fiery furnace and then there's that writing on the banquet wall and and and, and then Daniel himself was put into the lion's den and God rescued him chapter 7 through 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 12 are considered apocalyptic, meaning end time messages, end time messages. They, they, they contain revelation about destruction or the end of time. Daniel is, 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 is complicated because he presents uh, thankfulness and allegiance even while in exile. Or, or living in luxury. We don't, you know, because he remember now, Daniel is sitting next to the king. He's in exile, but he's in a position of power, position where he receives luxury. And so he's got to get these messages. He's given these visions, and, and all of these visions are coming to him, but it is showing that, 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 the children of Israel got to go through stuff, but it also shows everything leading up to the end time where the Messiah finally comes. And when the Messiah comes, he even talks about the things that are going to happen. So here we are in, in this book. It is talking about God's people living in a hostile environment. And Daniel receiving these vision, visions and, and, and remaining faithful. And he's trying to encourage the people, even in a hostile environment, to remain faithful. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. You, you, we, we're in a hostile environment. As of yesterday, uh, uh, at midnight, Friday night, going into Saturday, our government is shut down. We're living in a hostile environment. And, and when, when you're in a hostile environment, you got to stay faithful. Faithful to God and God alone. Oh, hallelujah. Let, let's get down into the lesson because I'll, I'll, I'll get on my soapbox about being faithful where, 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 where it, just, it just reminds us that, 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 oh, hallelujah. He said, no, stay right there. We got to be reminded each and every day that the God we serve is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory because he's the wise, only wise God. So that says that 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 he ain't just our co-pilot. You know, while we driving around, he he is the one that that is controlling everything. Driving a car is one of the most dangerous things we could ever do, and God has a way of of taking the wheel, leading us and guiding us. That's the kind of God we serve. Oh, hallelujah. He's faithful. And we ought to be faithful to him. That's, that's the point I'm trying to get to. All right, all right. Let's dig into the lesson. Let's go down. We, 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 we read earlier uh, through, the, through the Bible gateway passage that, that, that was leading into uh, our, our passages that we're talking about, verses 4 through 8 and then 15 through 19. And, and so this is the year. This is the first year of King Darius. So, so he's went from Nebuchadnezzar then to another king. Now he's Daniel is under King Darius, and 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 and, and so um, he he is looking at all the things that are going on, and he says, "Wow, I, I read 
what Jeremiah said. I heard what Jeremiah said that we're only going to be in this for, for 70 years. It's going to 70, 70, 70 years of desolation for of Jerusalem. So he says, then I, I set my face in verse three towards the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth and ashes. I pray to the Lord my God and make confession and say it, oh, oh Lord, great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and, and mercy with those who love him, with those who keep his commandments. We have sinned, oh hallelujah, we have sinned. Daniel wasn't playing. He said, we have sinned. Yes, Lord, we have sinned and committed iniquities. We have done wicked and, re and rebelled, wickedly and rebelled, even by departing from your precepts, your judgments. Neither have we heeded your servants, the prophet, who spoke in the name to our kings and our princes, to our fathers and all the people of the land. O oh Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but to us, shame of face as it is this day to the men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and all Israel, those near and those far off, and all the countries which you have driven them because of the unfaithfulness which they have committed against you. O oh Lord, to us belongs shame, shame of face, to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, because we have sinned against you. Oh, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. This, this is the people's sin. The word of God is clear about what sin is. Sin is is falling short of the glory of God. And Daniel got down on his knees and sackcloth and ashes, fasting and praying. I used to wonder, I used to wonder, in my early days of ministry, uh, of why, and really before I became, why people would moan and groan and, and cry out to the Lord. Why they always crying? Why they always moaning? Why, why they serve a wonderful God? But when you serve a wonderful God and you, you start thinking about all the things that are going around around you and even those personal sins that are going in on you, you got to cry out to the Lord and plead for forgiveness, not only for yourself, but for the people that God wants you to pray for. And so I've learned to cry out to the Lord for my sins. I've learned to cry out to the Lord for my family's sins. I've learned to cry out to the Lord for my country's sins. I've learned to cry out to the Lord for the sins of the world. Oh, it takes a toll on you. That moaning, that groaning, and that weeping, it'll take a toll on you. But we are supposed to be prayer warriors. We are supposed to be intercessors. And we can call those things that are not as though they are. 
We can call out and say they are forgiven. We can call out and say that they're going to be set free from whatever is bound in them. We can call out to the Lord and believe it and speak it and declare it. And it shall come to pass. I know somebody right now who's a real intercessor of prayer. A uh, prayer warrior is just, just shouting glory. Because cause they know that when God gives us that unction to, to get down on our knees and, and, and pray with supplication, fasting, sackcloth and ashes. That we are being totally sincere. And concerned, not just sympathizing with the people, but also empathizing with them because we're in the same boat. Oh, mercy. This, this, this was not just one of those prayers where you say, Lord, I did it. Please forgive me. No, 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 no. He, he, he went deep into this prayer. He, he 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 went deep into the prayer. He didn't he didn't just say, say, Lord, I did it, please forgive me. No, 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 no. He he went deep into prayer, supplication, and fasting. And he says, I pray to the Lord my God and my confession. And say, oh Lord, great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him and those who keep his commandments. When he started praying, he talked about the Lord being great and awesome. He talked about the Lord being faithful in keeping his promises. Oh, hallelujah. I'm glad we serve a faithful God that keeps his promises. And so when Daniel cried out to the Lord, he was talking about he keeps his covenant, he keeps his promises, his, his mercy and his loving kindness to those who love him and keep his commandments. That's why in the New Testament, Paul could say, all things work together for good for them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. He understood. Daniel understood. Paul, and we ought to understand that God is, is a great and mighty God. He's awesome and he got he, he has wrath and he has anger, but 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 we can be assured. That he's slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. And his anger does not last always. So we can come to him and confess our sins. Not run away from him. Not try to hide from him. But come to him. And Daniel goes on in this prayer. He says... In verse 5, we have sinned and committed iniquity. We have done wickedly and rebelled, even by departing from your precepts and your judgments. Yes, we have sinned. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've been perverse and, and wicked and, and rebellious. If you, if, I want you to catch this now. If you always in a rebellious state, always being contrary, always acting like you the devil's advocate, that's, that's rebelling against God. Oh, have mercy. That's why it just, it just, it just drives me nuts when I hear people talk about, well, I'm saved, sanctified, and set free, and living above sin. You ain't living above no sin unless uh, 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 you on the top bunk and I'm on the bottom bunk. Oh, hallelujah. We all have sinned and fallen short. We got something. 
that's going on with us that we need to confess. And then after we've known what we've done wrong and we confess, we got to look at our people. And, and we can't look at them in judgment because God is the only judge. We have to look at it and call upon his name. And so he goes on and he talks about the righteousness of God. And he talks about how the people didn't even want to listen to the kings. And I mean, the, pe the kings didn't want to listen to the prophets and the people didn't want to listen to the prophets and all of that. And then he finally just says, Lord, just have mercy on us and forgive us. That's, that's verse nine. It's outside of our text. But, but he wanted to make sure that the people's sins were called out. Now let's go down. Let's go down to verse 15 because I, I want to make sure I cover, cover the lesson according to the Sunday school. It's a lot. All he was doing between verses 8 and verses uh, 15 was still just calling on the name of the Lord and talking about all of the sins of the people. Then he gets to verse 6, 6 15. And he talks about the almighty God. And now, O Lord, he says, I, and now, O Lord, our God, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and made yourself a name as it is this day, we have sinned and we have done wickedly. He talks about the awesomeness of God in the past and how he brought out the children of Israel and then but not only is he saying Lord I know what you did in the past but I know you also know we have sinned and done wickedly we're not calling on you to help us based on our merits based on what good we've done it's a lot of good people in hell right now. People who did good but didn't believe in Jesus Christ. Didn't trust in his death, burial, and resurrection. So he's saying now, Lord, we're calling on you because you're an awesome God. Not because we have earned your forgiveness. No, Lord, it's because we need your mercy and your grace. Because you're a mighty God. And so Daniel gives his, his prayer request and, 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 he, and he's, he's laying out the sins of his people. And now he's talking about the almighty God. And finally we get to that request. Listen to verses 16 through 19. Oh Lord, according to your righteousness, not my righteousness, your righteousness, I, I pray, let your anger and your fury be turned away from the city of Jerusalem. Yes. Your holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our Father in Jerusalem, your people are reproach to all those around us. Now, therefore, O God, hear the prayer of your servant and his supplication, and the Lord, and for the Lord's sake, cause your face to shine on the sanctuary, on your sanctuary, which is desolate. Oh my God, incline your and hear, open your eyes and see our desolation and the city which is called by your name. For we do not present our supplications before you because of our righteous deeds, but because of your great mercy. Oh, catch that, y'all. Not because of our righteousness, but, but Lord, because of your great mercy. His mercy is new every morning. Morning by morning, he shows us new mercies. Thank goodness for new mercies. And so in verse 19, he says, O Lord, O Lord, 
forgive, O oh Lord. Listen and act. And do not delay for your name's sake. My God, for your city and your people who are called by your name. Have mercy, God. We plead, Daniel is pleading with God to have mercy and to forgive. Oh, hallelujah. If ever we can get to the point where we can pray for the forgiveness of our sins and our people's sins. And we can come together as a corporate body and pray and then go home individually and pray. And people really repent, confess and repent. God says he'll do a mighty thing. He says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, I would hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Oh, hallelujah. Daniel understood that the sins of the people had caused the consequences of them being in exile and Jerusalem being destroyed. There's always consequences to sin. Whatever we can choose, we choose whatever we want to choose, but we cannot choose the consequences. And the consequences of bad action is bad consequences. Yep. And so, Daniel is pleading with God to reverse the curse of sin and to forgive and renew the people. Wonderful lesson dealing with sin and dealing with prayer and confessing. We, we have to do it, people. If you, you walk around and you ain't never confessed your sins, you, you ain't looked at the man in the mirror, the woman in the mirror, and saw all of your shortcomings where you need to call upon the Lord, this is what I'm encouraging you to do. And then when you look at the, 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 the things that are going on in our country, Racism and prejudice and 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 and, and greed and, and and all of this lust that's going on and and all of this sexual harassment and all of this stuff and inequality, all of this stuff going on. We got some stuff we can cry out to God for. Yes, we can cry out to God and confess it. Not only for ourselves, but confess it for all of our people. And hear me, if you are being silent, you are complicit. Your silence means you're just a part of it. Oh, I'm going to stop for that. And just give you my conclusion and give a closing prayer. And we're going to do the prayer of salvation. Daniel is a great example to us today as believers. We will mess up sometimes, but we can, we should quickly ask God for forgiveness. There may be consequences. That means punishment for all that, that we do and sometimes even harsh ones. However, God loves us and he knows what is best for us even if it means going through the consequences. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, when we read a prayer such as Daniel's, we recognize how our prayers, the priority of our prayers, can get mixed up. Help us remember that we are students who continually 
are enrolled in the school of prayer. Teach us to pray with the passion and the priority of Daniel. Keep us as your students and teach us how to pray like Jesus prayed. For it is in his name, the name of Jesus, that we pray. Amen and amen. Before we end this recording on Facebook and on Get Them Radio, we want to make sure that we offer Jesus to you. That you might come to him, humble yourself, confess your wicked ways, call upon his name, and be saved, forgiven, set free redeemed so we pray the prayer of salvation please pray this prayer with us father god i confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead i repent of my sins please lord forgive me of my sins and come into my heart I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. All right. I thought to remember for this lesson is take the first step of, of an important journey. On your knees. <laughs> on your knees. Take the first step of an important journey. On your knees. Facebook, we're going to log off. Uh, if you want to join us on the conference call, on, on uh, get a radio, the number is 619-639-4733. Again, 619-639-4733. Goodbye, Facebook, and have a blessed week.